Production funding for Behind the Headlines is made possible in part by the Bartlett Area Chamber of Commerce and its member A2H, engineers, architects, and planners, creating an enhanced quality of life for our clients and community. To learn more about A2H's services and markets, visit A2H.com. The WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Former Nashville Mayor Carl Dean on what it takes to build great cities, tonight on Behind the Headlines. I'm Eric Barnes, publisher of the Memphis Daily News. Thanks for joining us. I am joined tonight by former mayor of Nashville, Carl Dean. Thank you for being here. Great to be with you. And Bill Drees, senior reporter with the Memphis Daily News. So I'll start with a, a, a very simple question. I'll give you a short answer. How do you build great cities and how do you sustain <laughs> them? I'm joking with you. But how? how? I mean, the well, I cities think... across the state are, are, are kind of on, on growing and thriving. Nashville certainly is. Memphis is, a lot of people would say, has turned a corner. What does it take to do that? For me, what I tried to do as mayor and what I think is important for cities to, to do is to concentrate on really three deliverables, uh, three priorities, I would say, for, for a city, which to me is number one is public education. I think public education is the number one issue um, for our state. I think it's the number one issue for the city of Nashville. You know, and the way I look at it, to define success in public education, uh, obviously success is when we're doing right by our kids and putting them in a position to have successful lives. But really, when you think about it, it comes down to when a young couple is deciding where they're going to live in the United States, where they're going to live in the Southeast, and they're looking you know, different places. And when they look at Nashville uh, or Memphis, you put public education, if they put that in the plus category, that's where you want to be, where that's part of your, your city's appealing to people, it's retaining people, and it's doing right by our kids. And then it's also important that when companies are looking to expand or they're looking to relocate, they're looking to go to places where the workforce is strong, where their employees' kids will be treated right in terms of education. And you want, again, education to be a plus factor. So education is key. I think public safety is always key. It's, it, you can never take your eyes off it. It's something you have to work hard on every day. It has to always remain a priority, even if the, no, the news is good. I mean, that's why governments are formed to make citizens safe. So that's always a priority. And then third to me is economic development, because you have to pay for things. Uh, and I believe that it's better to pay for things through having the, the, the pie expanding by having more revenue through growth coming into a city. Um, and you want to be a city where there are opportunities, where people can find jobs, where people can live their dreams, uh, where our kids want to come back to their homes. And so economic development is key. And so if you want to have good libraries with greenways, you want to invest in police and fire and, and, uh, and education, you've got to be creating the revenue. So those, those are the three the three basics in my mind, the three pitches you got to hit every day. And, and we'll dive into all those um, and not just, you know, what's going on in Nashville, but just, again, the kind of generic idea of what any city needs to do and what Memphis needs to do, what it's doing right and so on. But with education, um, there's been a huge amount of education reform in the state of Tennessee. Sometimes right. in Memphis, we think it's just happening to us, but actually mm -hmm. charter schools and the Achievement School District and all the changes in teacher tenure rules and testing, they're hitting all the schools across the state. Those were dictated by the, either the federal government and or the state. What, what's your take on that? Has it been a good thing in Nashville? Um, some people think it's been good here. Other people averse to change, you know, jury's still out. But in Nashville, all these state reforms, have they been positive for schools? I would say overall, yes. I mean, I, I'm a, I believe that, you know, if things aren't working, you just don't keep doing the same thing over and over again. And where Tennessee ranks in terms of ACT testing or other, uh, or other tests like that is not where we want to be. I mean, we don't want to be in the bottom half. We don't want to be in the bottom right. tenth. And, and so you have to make changes. I think we've benefited um, a great deal from having two governors of different political parties, uh, Phil Bredesen and Bill Haslam, who have been devoted to education. And, you know, during their time in office, um, a lot of changes occurred, uh, whether it's charter schools uh, or whatever, 
um, there have been changes, and you know, not everything works right, and sometimes change is painful. Right. But I do think you've you've got to be part of uh, sort of the reform movement, and you've got to be willing to do things differently if you expect different results. Well, I'll go to Bill in just a second, but just on the charter schools, there are so many charter schools now in Memphis of, of various stripes. What was the the reception of charter schools in Nashville? Were they were they warmly received? Were they were there you know people in the streets protesting? I mean, what, give me a sense of how that was received. Well, I, I have been a big advocate for charter schools, right. and it, I would say that certainly there were not people on the street protesting. But every I think that it's been a highly controversial area, and uh, we're going through school board elections now, and it's one of the issues that is discussed. But, you know, I came into office, we had maybe three charter schools. I left office somewhere close to 30. And for the most part, these charter schools um, are serving populations, are serving kids who are high risk in terms of uh, their education. And most of the results are outstanding in terms of how they're yeah. doing in uh, improvements in test scoring and in performance. Um, and when they're not, I mean, the, the way the charter school law works, I mean, if you don't, they can be closed down. Yeah. So, you know, you can, I, you can point to five, six, ten schools in Nashville charter schools that are sort of leading the way, and others are doing very well. So uh, it's an area of controversy, and I, and I would say that uh, you know, each one has been controversial in their own right, but I think the results speak for themselves. Bill. Mayor, l l let's talk about wh where Nashville is because the, the impression – certainly from here, is that it, things are booming in Nashville, and that obviously took a lot of hard work, but is, is there a point at which that hard work begins to generate its own momentum when after years of planning something, it finally starts to show results? Well, I think, you know, the Nashville story, the boom that's been going on now for the last four or five years, um, it didn't happen overnight. I mean, obviously... Nashville has had a long history of having a diverse economy and, you know, portions of its economy, particularly the health care and health care management, have, have been very strong, very entrepreneurial. Um, our universities have done great. The music industry, you know, is, is evolving, uh, but, it, but it is very strong and it's gone, you know, well beyond country music now. Uh, and there are different technology companies and entrepreneurs in Nashville that have done very well. But that, that has been going on for some time. I think what's happened in the last five or six years is that people around the country and the world have recognized that Nashville is kind of a unique place. And, you know, we've gotten a lot of national attention. We've, um, you know, seen uh, lots of success in terms of economic development, in terms of recruitment of companies and keeping companies in Middle Tennessee. And there's a sense that it is a good place to live, and it's a desirable place to be. And, and, and that, I go back to, comes from paying attention to public safety and economic development. And we worked very hard uh, and had great cooperation from the state, both from Governor Bredesen and Governor Haslam, to work on economic development issues. Uh, and that's where Nashville's success comes from. But it's also a discovery in Nashville, um, and it's also a sense that this it's a good quality of life and that the, the future looks good, I, I think. So within Nashville, within the 40-member city council that, right. that the mayor works with there, are there discussions about, okay, this part of the city is booming. When do we get to this part sure. of the city? Sure. I mean, I think, you know, people would um, look around the city and say that not every portion of the city has moved ahead as fast as others, and there's obviously a desire to see all, all boats rise and to see that people are, are all benefiting. Um, that's natural. But I would, I would uh, argue that when you create jobs, which I think is, you know, part of the influence on me was, you know, I was mayor during the Great Recession. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when there are jobs and there are no jobs being created and there's no uh, growth going on, you, you really appreciate it when you, get, when you have it. Uh, when you create jobs, that benefits everybody. I mean, government programs are great, but the best thing you can do for a city is to have a city that is producing jobs for its citizens. And, you know, that's the private sector doing that. And so, you know, that gets spread around. 
Mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of debate, I think, in you know across the state, but in talking about Memphis, huge debates that we've had on this show and in our paper and other papers um, about pilot tax incentives. Right. Um, a, long a lot of times people will say, well, Nashville doesn't use them and they're successful, but Nashville has used TIFs. And talk about, and, and let me turn it into a question, talk about the role of government incentives in any form in terms of this economic development and what role it played or didn't play in terms of creating this boom. Well, I think... Um we have used pilots, probably not the same level here in Memphis, and we certainly have used TIF. Uh, I think they've played an important role. It's, it's not the only factor or even, I think, the most important factor, but um, it makes you competitive. I think when you go head-to-head um, -head with other cities around the country when you're competing to keep Bridgestone in Nashville, to have them move right. their North and South American headquarters downtown, that major massive investment they've made, um, and everybody in the country is offering them incentives or recognizing the desirability of having them. I think we need to be in that game. Uh, when uh, HCA makes a massive investment downtown to bring Paralon and Sarah Cannon Research in the middle of our city, that sort of investment, uh, you know, and a lot of that money, too, is, you know, when you do something like that, particularly if they're going to basically vacant land or on a parking lot, I mean, that is land, you know, the money that you're giving in an incentive is really money that you wouldn't have unless this project took place. And this project is going to bring in a lot more jobs, a lot more tax revenue, right. and move the city forward. Now, that being said, I mean, economic climates change. I mean, right now, Nashville is booming. Right now, there's lots of people moving in. You know, maybe, you know, at, at some point you say, we don't need to do this. But, you know, there could be... You know, I don't know what's going on right now. I'll leave that to, to Meg, Meg and Barry. But, um, you know, sh there may be something happening where a, right. a, a large corporation wants to move to Nashville and it makes all the sense in the world to do what you have to do to get them here. Yeah. And did you get a lot of, did you get pushback on that? Did you get screaming or was, was, the, was the council on board with, with that need to do? I think most uh, of those votes incentives. on the incentives um, were overwhelmingly in favor. Right. And I, and I think correctly so. I mean, there were obviously people who disagreed. Yeah, but. yeah. Bill. It, uh, are the are the tips an easier sell though because they are more tend to be more compact, uh, a, a, a smaller area than say a TDZ zone, a tourism development zone. Yeah, I, I, well, I think so. And you know, tips often you can you know go through the uh, development authority, and, and it's it's a little bit different, and it's kind of geared all surrounding that project. And I think when people look at a, a pilot, they're thinking that, you know, we're losing revenue. But I, I think in the cases in Nashville, which was really all I can talk about, I think we used them fairly judiciously. And um, I would argue that uh, they've worked very much to the city's benefit. And you just got, then, you know, each, each individual uh, program or, or company or deal you're working on stands on its own. I mean, you, you know, you look at it and say, this might not be the right thing for us. We don't need to do this. Um, and something else you might say, well, we need to do this and we need to be aggressive. Uh, so I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say there's, a, there's a hardcore answer to say we're doing pilots in every situation because we don't. I mean, as many times we, we, we would say no. Right. But, but because, because a lot of the discussions here has been, okay, if we get this company's headquarters here, we can revitalize this entire area and it could lead to a ripple effect. But if I understand you correctly, the decision is basically one project at a time. And if it has a ripple effect, if it fits into a plan, that's fine. But basically at the end of the day, you're looking at that single project and does that make sense? Right. Yes. I, I think each project is decided on its own merits and they're decided individually. Yeah, let's talk. The other thing you mentioned, you mentioned a couple times here, public safety and crime. Memphis has a crime problem. Nashville has pretty much every state in America has a crime problem of some sort. Right. Okay? Um, what was your approach? And, and there's such this national debate about the role of policing um, after Ferguson, sentencing reform that's been discussed in some states and some very blue, very, I mean, excuse me, very red conservative states that are saying, look, we're, we're imprisoning too many people. And we need to, 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 to stop doing that. What was your approach as mayor? Uh, what worked, what didn't? Well, I think the main thing that worked, two, two things I, I would say um, worked for sure. Number one, we, may, as I, we made 
public safety a priority? And the importance of, of saying it's a priority is just not sort of political talk. When you say education and public safety are the priorities, you have a budgetary pie. It's just like high school civics, and, and you cut pieces of the pie in each year, and if, if the pie is growing, it's easier to cut a bigger piece of pie for education and public safety, the things you care about. When it shrinks, and it did shrink one year when I was mayor during the recession, it's tougher to say, I'm going to keep that piece of pie for public safety the same, or I'm going to grow it a little bit, because you're going to have to cut from something else. Um, and so that's what we did. I mean, during the depths of the recession, you know, we weren't cutting uh, police and education. Uh, we added 50 police officers through federal grants, and knowing full well we had to keep, you know, we had to come up with the money in a couple of years. Um, we were very supportive of the police financially. I don't, you know, we added a couple hundred police officers somewhere in that area. How many, give or take, how many police officers are there in Nashville? Uh, Over a thousand, okay. and 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 so we've 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 added police officers, the largest police force we've ever had, and uh, we have built new precincts, uh, getting them more out into the, into neighborhoods. Um, we've built a D, our own DNA crime lab. Uh, we have been very supportive of, of public safety in terms of public funding. And then good leadership. I, I think our police chief, Steve Anderson, uh, has done a great job. I made him police chief in, during the flood because uh, we lost our police chief during, during that time period, and Steve was the deputy. And he's just done a great job of, of leading. And, and, and I'll give you an example. You talked about Ferguson. You know, we had protests, which is natural and you know, probably you know, appropriate given the circumstances. And uh, you know, when, when protesters would come to the, to, in December or January to the police headquarters, I mean, he would go out and talk to them and not greet them uh, with uh, any fear or, or sense of confrontation, but bring hot chocolate and coffee and talk to people. And he's done a great job about getting out into the community and talking about what he's, what he's trying to do. Um, you know, we saw really good results. We hit a 50-year low in homicides uh, while I was mayor. Um, you know, a lot of factors go into it, a lot of factors that no one right. controls and no one can predict. But, but you know, that was, that was good news. And I do think whatever all these, all these different factors that go into it, I do think if you consciously invest in public safety, if you consciously invest in their infrastructure, and if you have good leadership, that you're going to see results. Um, you know, you look at any city, uh, you know, for Nashville to have a 50-year low, we still had 40-something homicides. And by any normal evaluation, right. that's obscene. Yeah, it's too many. Yeah. But compared to in the late 1990s when there was 112. Yeah. So, but, but, part but of, that's so right, why I say you got to work on it every day. Right. And, and so right now, the, the conversation, you know, the Memphis Police Department was peaked at around 2,400. It's down to around 2,000. Mayor Strickland is, you know, trying to get back towards that number. And that was your experience, that, that that volume of police was important. And more police out in police precincts was part of the equation, not just throw them out there and... You know, yeah, and I may be I may I may be off on the thousand figure. It's, it's been eight or nine months. And just, <laughs> these figures used to roll off my head, but but no, I, I you know I'm a big believer that you know making those investments we made each year really, and and particularly during the recession, to keep police officers and to hire new ones pays off. Right. And and you have to see it also in the context of the city's growing. It's not like it's, it's remaining static. I mean, there are more people living there, and there are more demands on the police, and they needed those resources. I, I, could, I would argue that they probably need more now, and they need more probably in my last budget. Right. Shifting a little bit, I mean, what are some of the things that, that um, all is not perfect in any city, so right. all is not perfect in Nashville, all is not perfect uh, anywhere. Um, what are some of the things you look back and wish you'd gotten, gotten done that you couldn't get done during your term? Things that, well, that still, you know, right. languish or, or didn't improve the way you would have wanted? I mean, the obvious frustration for me would, would be public transit. I mean, I, I, you know, I watched the city grow. I, I, I talked about public transit when I ran for mayor in 07. It really wasn't an issue. And I think if you poll people in Nashville now, it, you know, education and transit would be neck and neck for the number one issue in the city. And, and people, I think we're at a point where uh, we need to have transit solutions. And um, we, I think we got the discussion going. I think, uh, I think it's now going to happen. Um, it, it's going to be hard, but, it, but, it, but that would be my, my, my greatest frustration. We put a lot of money into buses. 
put a lot of money into improving transit. But I think that's, for a city like Nashville, um, you have to invest in that infrastructure to make sure it keeps working right. Yeah. So, so what was the perception about what public transportation, mass transit was for in Nashville at, at the outset of your push? Because I think what we're discovering here in our own discussion about it is that public transportation comes up as an answer to so many challenges that we have that people might not think it would solve. Issues like mobility, issues like development in other parts of town, issues like right. uh, jobs. No, I think that's, uh, look, transit has an enormous impact on housing. You know, if, you know, one of the things that's happening uh, in American cities is that there are more and more people who want to live uh, near the core of the city. Uh, particularly young people. There's sort of what they call it the great inversion. People from the suburbs are coming in. And what you'll see as a result of that is in the, in the core of the city, uh, prices will go up for housing. And if you don't have adequate transit to get people to areas where the housing is more, uh, is, is cheaper, then you're going to have even greater housing problems. You know, the people who, who are riding transit regularly now in Nashville, and our bus ridership goes up all the time, are people who are using it to get to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, the people who, you know, who, who work and keep clean in our, in our hospitals and look after people, uh, you know, ride buses. People who are, who are doing jobs where um, you know, they can't afford to have a car and pay for parking are riding the bus. And I think the other thing that's going to happen is that when you have all these businesses uh, in the core, uh, people are going to want to get to them without all the difficulties of driving. And so those transit solutions are, are, are important. And then for Nashville, and Memphis would be in the same category, cities that have a lot of attraction for tourists. Uh, you know, people come and they want to get about the city. They want to see things without having to have a car. Um, and, and you can get cars off the road with that. I mean, transit is difficult because, number one, you hit up a lot of, a lot of sensitive things. It's, it's kind of a, it's a neighborhood thing. It's a little bit of a NIMBY aspect of this. You know, transit's great. But, but don't, hey, don't, don't take, mess with my street. Yeah, don't, take my, my left, don't yeah. take my left turn away. Or don't, yeah. you know, don't, don't have everybody coming over here. W were, uh, you, were you, just a few minutes left in the show, transit was, uh, was a big issue for Governor Haslam in the last session. Right. Uh, but very quickly, and, and he and his team outlined on this show and in other places, you know, the incredible needs for the whole state, Nashville, areas of Memphis, and so on. But there's not enough funding because everything is funded by the gas tax or so right. much is funded by the gas tax and the gas tax revenue is shrinking. Do you think there will be a point at which, so really nothing, very little got done in the legislature on this whole issue of transit in the last session. Do you think that will ever change in the legislature, um, that they will find a way to fund some of these kinds of things you're talking about? I think they have to. Uh, you know, I think to have a real transit solution, which is going to be important not just for Nashville, but for Memphis and Chattanooga and Knoxville, all the major urban areas, and it affects not just you know, Memphis, it affects Shelby County and the surrounding counties, and the same with Middle Tennessee, you, you're going to have to have an alignment of local government, state government, and the federal government. Federal government plays a big role. To make that work, you need the state, the state involvement and to make transit work in an area like Nashville or Memphis to make it truly regional, which is vitally important, you're gonna need state leadership on that too. I think that the economic engines for the state are largely around the urban areas, and if we don't take care of those engines and keep them generating revenue for the state, it's gonna hurt the state. Well, do you see, I mean, Governor Haslam said recently at a, a forum or a month or two ago that, I, I don't have the right quote, but paraphrasing him, that you know, there's a, a, a very anti-city uh, tone in the legislature and that he kind of said some of the things you said about the legislature needs to understand how much economic uh, wealth, how much you know, uh, tax revenue and so on is generated in the four big cities. Do you sense that, too, that there's this kind of anti-city tone within the legislature? Well, I think there's been, um, well, you know, obviously the state breaks down a little bit where, where in terms of the cities have been Democratic and the, and the rest of the state has been very Republican. But the way I look at it is this. You know, I grew up in a small town, and uh, now I'm, uh, I'm the former mayor of a, of a big city. And for the state of Tennessee, we're all in this together. I mean, we really are. I mean, it, 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 
it is good for the rest of the state when Nashville does well. It's good for the rest of the state when Memphis does well. And it's good for us in Memphis and Nashville when the rural areas do well. And we have to, and it's like the way I would talk about it in Nashville in this neighborhood issue. It, it, we're all, it's one city, it's one state, and we got to work together. And I, and, and I think having a rural-urban divide is almost, it, it, I think it exists in the legislature. Um, but I think that's like going back to the 1920s. I mean, it, yeah. it's just but going in the wrong direction. I mean, do you, do it'll you change. See that change. Oh, definitely, it'll change. The demographics of the state are changing. The, the urban areas are changing. The suburban areas uh, are really the ones are, that are feeling this the, this yeah. transit and, and 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 road issue more than anybody else. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to change. You were here for the Green Print Summit. I'm yep. not giving near enough time to this. Talk to the importance. There's a whole lot of greenways and parks and, and all that happening in Memphis now. Trails, the Harriman Bridge opening. Talk about the importance that, that greenways and such were uh, to the growth of Nashville. Well, it, it contributes to the high quality of life. It's what people want to have for an amenity from a city. And so I think it helps attract and it keeps people there. But it's also important for our citizens' health um, and just preserving uh, green space in, in a city. Uh, people in Tennessee need to exercise more, and we need to make the, the healthy choice the easy choice. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Bill, and thank you for joining us. Join us again next week. Production funding for Behind the Headlines is made possible in part by the Bartlett Area Chamber of Commerce and its member A2H, engineers, architects, and planners, creating an enhanced quality of life for our clients and community. To learn more about A2H's services and markets, visit a2h.com.